What's up guys, this is Seal Suede, and for today's video, what I'm going to be talking about is really only going to apply and benefit for other type 1 diabetics out there. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of non-diabetic watchers out there, but please still watch the video and share the video because there's a lot of diabetics out there that are really left in the dark, especially ones that are just diagnosed who really think their life is over and have... Uh, no idea where to start and what to do. Trust me, I've had friends before. I've had a friend before around the age of maybe like 13 a while ago who got diagnosed and it was horrible. She didn't know what to do and I helped her out and I showed her pretty much what to do, where to start and everything was great. So just share it, you know, like it, get it out there uh, so other diabetics can see this because what I'm about to tell you guys is extremely important for a type 1 diabetic it's really like the most major part of being a diabetic and what to do so what I'm be talking about today guys is an insulin finding your insulin to carb ratio um, I get a lot of messages with how much insulin are you taking and what kinds of insulin are you taking now there are different types of insulin but what I use is I use Hemolog right over here and I, this is short acting insulin so whenever you want to eat carbohydrates you take this okay and then my other one, it's upstairs, um, I should have brought it down, but it's called Lantus, okay? It's the same thing, uh, same look, like a pen. This is called the pen, by the way. This is not a pump. Um, same thing, a pen, except it is gray. And what it is, it's a long-term shot, all right? So it's for the night. When you're about to sleep, as a diabetic, uh, your body does not have a pancreas, so it doesn't produce insulin correct so when you're not diabetic your body constantly is giving you the amount of insulin you need for your body to function uh, and stable just normally and for me you know I can't my body doesn't stable correctly or it's, it is not stable because I, I always have to uh, manually give myself my insulin because my pancreas is dead it doesn't work so that's when you're sleeping that's anywhere from like six to ten hours where you're not getting any insulin at all so that's what the long-term uh, shot does it pretty much keeps you safe through that whole night keeps your blood sugars real stable so now that I went through what I use which is what most diabetics use nowadays it's either the pen and the pump this applies for the pen and the pump by the way what I'm gonna tell you guys finding your insulin to carb ratio so a lot of people tell me how much insulin are you taking and they tell me oh I'm prescribed to this much insulin a day, like four times a day, this six units lunch, six units dinner, um, as you really want to ask your doctor about the pen or the pump. That's really the old school way of doing it. I used to be the same way, uh, but that was around like uh, early 2000s when they didn't really have much technology or the type of medicine they do now where you know you can have the luxury of just taking a shot and eating whenever you want even as a diabetic so anyways make sure for you older folks out there check with your doctor and ask them about this the pen or the pump and now what I mean by finding your carb to, in, uh, to insulin ratio now you have to talk to your doctor and you have to first of all experiment with yourself that's the thing about being a type 1 diabetic guys you're constantly experimenting your your body is kind of like a scientific facility all right it's you're always um, playing around with it you your body's changing every single day so um, I used to start with say for example every eight grams of carbs one unit okay so every meal I'd have eight grams of carb one unit and then there would come uh, I would come across a time where okay I did exercise and as you know, when, when you do exercise, your blood sugar gets low, or it gets lower, especially a diabetic, you have to watch out with how much insulin you're taking. So, I would take that um, one unit per eight grams of carbs, say I, I took like five units for whatever, however much I was eating, um, and I would get low after I did exercise, right? So, okay, there you go. I told myself, well, I took one unit for that eight grams of carb my previous meal, maybe an hour or two before my exercise and I got low that shouldn't have happened because I should have bumped up my carb to insulin ratio I, I should have took um, maybe anywhere from 10 to 12 grams per one unit because if I know I'm going to be do, uh, doing physical activity 
my blood sugar will drop and my my body will be speeding up and you don't want to be taking as much insulin so there there you go with that you just have to keep experimenting and right now what I'm on is pretty much every t uh, 12 to 15 grams of carbs I'll take one unit okay and then before exercise I'll take maybe around one unit per 20 grams of carbs now this is very different for everybody especially someone who's extremely active like me or if you have a low body fat percentage when you have a a lot higher body fat and you're not in shape you will your body will need more insulin as you get leaner especially now that I'm finding that out when I'm cutting and everything you your body needs a lot less insulin so you have to watch out with that as you get leaner be very cautious of how much insulin you're taking and be very cautious with your carb to insulin ratio you know you always want to be bumping it up by a gram or two every now and then so you want to climb steadily you want to climb with it okay so uh, that is ext actually extremely high like like I said before I work out 20 grams um, that's most diabetics would be like wow that's you know that's not much insulin at all so that's why it's important to get in shape so you don't have to keep pumping insulin into your body you know that's one thing I hated before I was in shape just always pumping insulin insulin I felt like a you know just felt like a, a robot or something I didn't I didn't feel right so it's real great to have one of those high carb to insulin ratios and that's what you want to kind of build up to you want your body kind of to build up an immune system to insulin if that makes sense even though we need it to live however you, you just want to keep bumping that up you want to take as much as the least amount of insulin you want because then your uh, hemoglobin levels will be that's when you can tell it's real good when you don't have to take that much insulin because your blood sugars aren't as high now you also want to find a uh, correction okay so what what correction is that pertains to your blood sugar so what I correct my goal you have to find a goal um, blood sugar level that you're pretty much that is the perfect blood sugar level if you could be on that blood sugar level your whole life that would be awesome you're doing amazing that's pretty much your correction level what so mine is 120 okay and 120 is extremely good for my age you have to realize as you get older that will change 120 is high for say a 40 year old okay 40 year old maybe that's he wouldn't his perfect goal would be around like 90 okay 80 to 90 so it does change as you get older but you will come across that so anyways to continue what I was saying so what I correct for uh, one unit for every 50 over 120 so say I measure myself one day and my blood sugar is 240 okay so what I will do I'm gonna have a meal right so it's 240 I have to first find out how much insulin I'm gonna take just to correct my blood sugar alright forget the carbs the insulin for how much carbs I'm eating I have to first correct my blood sugar so what I will do is uh, get my goal uh, blood sugar level right my my correction level what I want to correct down to which is 120 and I subtract 240 or 120 from 240 so what are we left with correct 120 so I have 120 left and what I do is for every 50 over I take one unit so I take two units correction and then I'll take however much insulin I need for my meal you know say I'm having every 15 grams for one unit for my meal I'm having 60 grams of carbs um, I will take four units for that meal and then two units for the correction because I had to correct down okay so you you have to pay attention to both very closely okay you have to know how much you're correcting for you have to have a certain blood sugar level you want to get to and you always have to take you have to always have to know a carb to insulin ratio how many carbohydrates uh, per unit of insulin because you can't just be randomly taking insulin you know because there's people telling me oh yeah I, don't, I have to take six units for lunch I have to, and then I get a high blood sugar or and then I get a low blood sugar I don't know what's going on and this day I, I took five I have you know I have to take five or six units for this but that's not how it works guys because you know your body will read carbohydrates and it will need insulin 
to correct for those carbohydrates and your blood, your current blood sugar. So a lot of people actually don't know that and this is a huge, huge deal and pretty much fixing your blood sugar and getting a stable uh, hemoglobin level and just being real healthy as a type 1 diabetic. So I hope you guys liked the video. Please like it, share it. I really want a lot of other diabetics to see this out there because trust me, this will help a lot. Your life will change with this information. So please uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel if uh, you like the content. And as always, stay strong. <laughs>